Hey, you know me? I come out to read. Well, keep it on you. Well, do the video. You might be around the central and other places. Places like Natural History Museum, Science Museum, Agba Sosko Sosko Koja, Agba Park Lake Koja, Koja City. I don't know where it's going to be. It's going to be in London. Then we should dress the good studio because this is the winter time. Layers upon layers, by the man who over here. Jacket upon jackets, when necessary, because of the two shoes, which are my yara. Well, you know, video here, I don't see central London, I don't see west London. I live life in one way, because I don't see life for me, Niger. Anyway, if I was in London, I don't know if I was in London. You know what? It was London. It should be. That man was London. That man just see fake and can't get a Malaya lock on. That man just see back in. That man just see only no. But it was London. By the time you come round to places like this, West London, Central London, Upper Circles, Bond Street, and all that like that, then you can now see more of London. Victoria styles. You can only tell me. Victoria. We will talk more about this on this video. Hey, you mean? Hey, you can look. Hey, you mean? You can watch this. Hey, join subscribe. Hey, you subscribe, bro. Hey, then like the video, hey. Hey, you mean? Okay, let me share. Good to go. Hey, you go. So let's get straight into West London and visit the Science Museum and explore the whole lots of historical facts about the Science Museum. Let's go in there. This is very educative. Let's enter into the museum. We're going to go in there and uh, have a tour of the museum. Here we are inside the uh, Science Museum. I actually donate. If uh, it's a free donation, if you really want to. Uh, I like um, cash or something. Before we dive into the deep of the museum, to examine some of these uh, historical facts around the energy and the revolutions, let's first look at all these items, the modern items, technologies and other items that we've been using just in recent past. And before we now go back into the past to know how when it all started. We have to preserve things. What we use now, we think is modern, will also become classic later. So you can see loads of items that you can recognize here. Some have been some years back. But the fact is, let's start from there. You see those, what we call Turaya or whatever. That kind of, uh, some people call it pure water. That kind of phone we are using there, Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> Nokia Bang Bang, we call it. Nokia <laughs> 310. Motorola. Old School. And uh, lots of uh, all these uh, camera there. But we think most of these things are just a few years uh, by we've been using this. And we've just moved away from it, not using it for now. It's fast becoming classic, but it's not yet classic. But do you want they become classic? Centuries and hundreds of years will come that all these items will now become ancient. Sometimes we will refer it to, uh, to be insignificant, but it's actually our link to the history from where we start from. We're still at the um, British Science Museum and um, there's lots to give to you on this channel. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. Like this video and Let's have your comments. most of these things actually we have it over there in Africa because believe that even the, the, the history of the Yorubas the Yoruba people before 1800 have been having these uh, 
textile. We have textile industry. We have places where we actually you know, weave our clothes, and we have the machine doing that as well. So this is it. We just need to preserve things and then write it down for generation to learn from it. A whole lot of things are being preserved and uh, you know put together. steam engine uh, put together in 1901. We have the bicycle compound engine in 1898. You can see slowly uh, the mechanism working. The invention of energy we're going to see here at the Science Museum London. It says today we take electricity for granted but at the end of the 1800s it was new and exciting as its generation caused a revolution in steam power. The earlier steam engines evolved slowly, but the steam turbine, a new innovation, went from prototype to production in less than 10 years. This was the moment at which steam power entered the modern world. So let's continue to have a look. You see this electricity. You touch the screen, give us more details about the prototype steam turbine by Charles Parsons in 1884. This is the energy network. The early power stations. So we talk about energy, we always make mention of Sir Charles Parsons, an inventor of the steam turbine. Oil paint by Musa Yip after the original by Sir William Hawking in 1774, James Watt changed the whole cause of his life, leaving Scotland to join Mark Bolton in Birmingham. Watt had already visited Birmingham and met Bolton, the industrial giant of his age, and the two became fast friends. Bolton was impressed by Watt's steam engine, but saw progress was slow and interrupted by Watt's serving work in urge Watt to join him. Then in 1973, Watt's wife Peggy died in childbirth. Moreover, Scotland had a banking crisis, and John Roebuck, was backer, went bankrupt. He said, and I quote, I am heart sick of this accursed country. Wrote, what? He set out to join Bolton and develop the engine in Birmingham. Take a look at it. So, so massive turbine engine. It says nine engine on the house. Let's find out.
space. developed by Britain in the 1950s. Let's get to here. What's this stand for? It's a TV screen for show images from forward pointing periscope. Over here, it's a port window. It has an extra outer pane that is jettisoning during the final few minutes of the return to her. So here is the other side of the engine inside the Soyuz rockets. I know astro astronauts are very used to these materials. Just like uh, you can see them inside. Floating. See the technology. Wow. Like Mercury, the moon is covered in craters from countless asteroid and meteorite impacts over millions of years. Some of the craters are over 2 billion years old. The large dark areas you can see are vast flat plains called marine, from the Latin word for sea. In the past, astronomers saw the dark shadows and thought that they were vast expanses of water, 
they are actually ancient lava flows. The lighter features, composed of light-colored rock types, are mountains known as the Lunar Highlands. Here at the site of Zion, you can see the aquatic Exploring the uh, space, exploring the space, shall we go on to the modern world? So, making the modern world inside the uh, museum, right here inside the uh, uh, Science Museum, London. So, we want to get to know how we come to this level where we are. This is the making of this modern world. Much of the history around here will be starting from 1800. Let's have a look at this. The world holders team locomotive. Puffin Billy locomotive is called around 1814. This is the oldest surviving steam railway locomotive in the world. Rather than carrying passengers, it, call, it usually carry coal trains at little more than walking space along a five mile stretch of railway between William Colley and the nearby river Tyne. There, the coal was loaded onto ships for transport around the coast. Let's go further into the modern, the making of the modern world inside the Science Museum. Exploring and you know, touring the science museum. Here is another used locomotive. Can you believe that this has been used some years back? You know, of course, a little time off, just a few centuries ago, someone will be sitting in, on top of this uh, kind of uh, carrier. And uh, you know, it's a car. Then it's called the college. The car comes to Britain. This is Panhard and Lavazzo motor car in 1895. It, it, it won the world first motor race in France in 1895. The same year, motoring pioneer and member of Parliament Evelyn Ellis brought this vehicle to Britain, the first ever car import. He used it to mount a successful challenge to legislation hampering the development of motor car use and manufacture in the UK, then in Britain. Let's continue to move around. Motoring for the masses. Just following their development, in 1916, Ford Mulder T. This is it. Ford Mulder T. With this Mulder T, Henry Ford showed the world that a new system of production had come of age. Fordism. We call it Fordism. I'm reading from the inscription, you know, uh, written here. Fordism brought motoring within reach of huge new markets making cars simple and affordable by applying mass production techniques on a vast scale. Between 1908 and 1927, Ford produced over 15 million molded teeth, and by 1919, they accounted for over 40% of the cars on British roads. So, this is model T Ford. Now, not just default, 
we look into the heart of we look into other things we're looking into engines we're looking into what looks like the modern bentley it is actually called rover rover jet one take a look at it look at the shape It's actually rover gas turbine car. This Jet One was the world's first gas turbine powered motor car. It was made by Rover, the car company which had been intended as the main producer of the new Wittel aircraft jet engine in the Second World War work on a small gas turbine suitable for powering a motor car began in 1946 and finished which was unveiled to the public in 1950. In 1952 Jet 1, this very vehicle here, uh, was fitted with an operated engine and achieved a world record speed for gas turbine cars of 152 miles per hour. Let's move further. Loads of other cars of age. Pure classic, indeed, who call these ones. Classic. Pure classics. This particular one, we have loads of them loaded there like that. This classic in the British Science Museum here. We have the names starting from uh, Fayat. 600 to Citron C 2 CV Morris Minor MM Volkswagen Sahab 93 Hino Contesta Sedan. Yeah, they are. Now we're going higher up in the sky. We have this giant uh, haircuts. This giant aircraft lying across there, painted in silver, silver, made of silver. It's actually, we can say, maybe it's a pure design or possibly uh, what, we don't know, maybe it's actually in its pure form. Wow. Look at the other aircraft here, 07560. Hanging in the hair, this very aircraft. This is the bizarre, the art of the bizarre. From there, let's take a look at the model of cruise liner. This is an Andorra Star 1927 scale. This is the scale of 141, the one we are seeing right here. We will take a look at it. The 1920s and 1930s were a time of glamorous travel by luxury ocean liner. Speed was important, but comfort fine dining and leisure activities were expected too. So, this model was displayed in Blue Star Lines, London showrooms in Regent Street. Let's take a closer look at this liner. You can see that figure out that swimming pool there. Anadora Harandora style London. So after the outbreak of war in 1939, Anandora Star was altered to become a true transporter and supported the evacuation of Allied soldiers. So arguably controversially in July 1940, 
Waikai in a mixed crew of servicemen and civilians. The ship was torpedoed and sunk. It is estimated that about 800 lives were lost in the tragedy. Let's go back to motor show. Motor show meaning the section of the park. There are more to go and to say at the British Museum, Science Museum. All we need to do is just have a time out and come over here, book your ticket, and it's free to come and see for yourself at the British Science Museum. Uh, Science Museum, this is it. I hope you enjoy going inside this Science Museum with me and uh, if you enjoyed this video, kindly click the like button, share it, and then have a comment.